in, in, in light of this conversation about our rights, with everything that's been happening, where do you, th let's talk about the split. What, what do you think is, uh, uh, you're optimistic, you said, that you think we're going to have a, a, a resurgence and some patriotism, a, a new president who comes and saves the day? Or do you think it's all going to just crumble, fall apart? Look, I, I, I have to think that somehow we're going to get through this and we're, there's going to be a new day where we realize that it's important uh, to respect our rights, to create a civil society where everybody can participate and uh, where it's not run for the pure benefit of an elite upper class. There will always be an elite, but we used to have an elite that at least pretended to 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 care about the nature of the country and the people in it we don't have that right now uh, the split is my sixth uh, uh <sighs> kelly turnbull action novel people run around shoot people the, this story is america has split in two into red and blue areas the hero goes into the blue areas to do missions and sees how things are happening the split takes place about a year six months a year after the country has split in two so this is like uh, your imagination of what would happen if this really did happen, right? Yes. Basically. So, yeah. So how does the country split? Uh, country uh, basically comes up to the brink of war and negotiates uh, uh, a somewhat peaceful uh, uh, split into basically. But, but what's the underlying f fracture? Is it just tribalism? It's exactly what we're seeing now. It's an elite that uh, wants to oppress. It is uh, normal Americans who don't want to be oppressed. Uh, there is some violence. Some red it, states like, you know, Abbott, DeSantis say we're not going to comply. Exactly. Some of the some of the bigger uh, uh, red states refuse to comply. There is a crisis, which was the book that preceded this crisis. And that covers uh, the, the split up of America in my, my timeline. And uh, all through it, you know, you have my little action hero running around with his Wilson combat CQB 45 shooting liberals and seeing people. Uh, uh, be wacky and he's dealing with a lot of these folks and Ameri Blue America is essentially a, a giant college campus people's talking about their pronouns you know sports team uh, you know forced to uh, you know invite uh, fat athletes so that they're anti-fatism uh, it's almost you know, what, what's that what's that um, I can't remember the idiocracy name. no 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 that, that, that <laughs> short that short the sh I mean, yeah. The short story about how... Um, Harrison Bergeron. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I know. It's just like right there. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, another Kurt who writes well, books. So, so does, this, does this follow the timeline properly with the other story you had? Like, uh, yeah. Well, look, I've, I've written the books out of chronological order. I actually conveniently have a list. In fact, I've got like 425 reviews in Amazon. Most of them five star, which I'm super appreciative of. I, I, people love these books. And I, I, I really enjoy writing them, and I hope I'm saying so. But they, they, in, in these reviews, a startling number are like, and in his preface, which you should read, Kurt lists the timeline of the books because I didn't write them chronologically in the timeline. Uh, so you can write, read them as he wrote them. You can read them in chronological order to see how things go. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, I, I'm now in six books, so I've kind of got like a canon. But and I feel like those Star Trek guys... You know, and people are coming up going, you know, your character, Kelly Turnbull, in number one, he said his social security number was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But in the new one, it's one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. What's up with that? Like, would you uh, uh, typo? Would you advise them reading <laughs> them <laughs> chronologically <laughs> or from let's, the beginning? Let's, but let's go. I want to go. Oh, let's talk about the story. Um, you don't you don't think it's going to happen, though? To, to, no, to, I, 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 I think we're going to figure. I, look, I, I, I think we we're going to have. Uh, in 2022, 2024, a, uh, a a backlash. And I think we're going to muddle through. That doesn't mean we will. That means I think that's the most likely result. And frankly, it's the one I hope for. What do you think the Democratic establishment will do when they lose control of the House but retain control of cultural institutions? Um, and the presidency. Well, if we have a... If, well, we're, if, are, are they up? They're, they're up to lose the Senate as well, right? They could lose the Senate. Yeah. It's less likely. They're almost right. starting to lose the House just on structural factors. Gerrymandering. Uh, like gerrymandering, uh, which we should do ruthlessly because they're going to. Uh, I want to I pause real quick and explain how important and good gerrymandering oh, is. Oh, yes. The people who claim that gerrymandering is bad, these people are authoritarians who are trying to lie to you and manipulate you. And you see the memes all the time where they're like, gerrymandering is bad, and here's why. And they show three squares. And within each square, you can see 40% red and 60% blue. And they say in each of these districts, a Democrat will win 
Now let's do gerrymandering. And then they shape the inside of the cubes in certain ways so that it's only, it's like th- it's like three to two red and the right. Republicans win. And then they always say, see, that's why it's bad. They will, they will then show you a map. And on the map, you'll see like a Dan Crenshaw's juris- uh, district, for instance, is like a weird moon shape with like weird lines connecting it. And they're like, see, it makes no sense, right? What should it look like? A square? But what about industrial centers? What about factories? Exactly. Are those going to fall inside his congressional district? No. They draw these things to make sense for two, two very important reasons. One, when it's drawn all weird, it's because that's where people live. Yes. And they think it's going to be a square. It's like, that's a, that's a sea world, dude. <laughs> he's got to, he's got to, he's got, it's got to be over the houses. So they connect the residential areas and it looks weird. The other reason is if we just did it block by block, you very well could end up with zero representation for a strong minority who then says, I object because they're no longer getting listened to. I- exactly. Uh, ideally, representative sh- districts should be representative. Uh, but they don't have to be perfect. And, uh, you know, the the party in power in each state has the ability to draw lines to its advantage to get one or two extra seats. Uh, in New York, I think there are right now eight Republicans. They're probably going to cut it down to three. Yeah, and I think... Uh, and, and, and in Ohio, there's a map you could draw, a legit map, that, and there's some uh, Voting Rights Act stuff to make sure that minority communities have represent, representation. Uh, we, we, that's just a fact. I'm not arguing for or against it. Uh, but you could uh, you could get a 13-2 uh, Republican Ohio if you wow. did it a uh, certain way. And I say you should do it because well, so, everybody's going to do it. So back to the back to the main issue, uh, Republicans control a majority of the states, yes. the state houses, which means they can draw up the congressional maps. Yes. Which means Republicans, just on that factor alone, are poised to win at yes. least, what is it, 11 seats they need to win? Yeah, about, they need five to win, five to take over. And what do you think is going to happen when, in 2022, the Democrats lose the House? They've already been tweeting, if we lose the House, it's all over. I wonder what they mean by it's all. What is that reference to? And then what happens in 2024 when Trump or DeSantis wins? We already saw how insane they got in the first term of Trump. Do we, do we, are we just going to assume that they're going to sit back? Look, look what uh, 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 it was reported by the Boston Globe. What, um, what's the guy he did the Hillary campaign? I can't remember his name. Podesta? Podesta, John Podesta. Yeah, look what he said uh, during, before, oh, Boston yeah. Globe said that he, he advised the West Coast to secede if Donald Trump were to win the election. So what's going to happen come 2024? They lose cultural power 2020. They lose House power in 2022. We then start seeing, well, I don't want to get optimistic, but maybe Republicans will use subpoena power. I really doubt it. Well, look, <laughs> I, I, if we get a Republican in there who is woke, who knows what time it is, which which you mean uh, red build. Red pilled. Yeah, woke Ooh. is the other way. Other way. I like woke. Woke. Woke me. is my word. I'm taking woke back. I'm with you. I, I I want woke. I man, I'm insomniac woke. I refuse to sleep. I no You're ambient awake. for Kurt. Um, I want a Republican. Let's let's call it Ron DeSantis because Donald Trump is not that guy. Donald Trump still believes in institutions, which is no. adorable, but uh, you know, I, I and I'll support him if he's the nominee. Uh, but, uh, we, we, you know, he's going to have primary, I think. I don't think he right. walks in by any right. means. I, uh, and nor should he. I am unsentimental about politicians. You've got to prove you're the best. you got to prove you're the winner. And there's no gimmies and uh, no favorites. It's but you, Battle Royale, Thunderdome. First, do you think Republicans should... They, one, one interesting thing is we have a ton of Republicans running now. Like, the announcements are, are apparently, like, huge numbers of people getting active and getting involved. Which, yeah, a lot of them are... I mean, like, Mike Pompeo's a nice guy, but I don't no, no, see no, no, any I mean Pompeo in, I mean mania. House. Oh, for the House. The House is great. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. People oh, we're, oh, we're seeing some great guys. candidates in some areas. Oh, my gosh. People are, people are super motivated, and that's great because that starts building our bench. And then you have people like uh, Scott Pressler, who's doing voter registration. Love Scott. And he's saying, the I think persistence. Republicans, right, they're going to overtake Democrats in voter registration. So these are really good signs. Yeah. And do you, uh, but it, do, you, do you think the Republicans will use the powers of the House at all the way the Democrats did? Um, Kevin McCarthy is going to have to walk a fine line between the old Republicans and the new ones. And, he uh, and, and, and he could resign. He won't. Uh, <laughs> but look, I mean, look. We're, we're adults here. There are factions. Our yeah. faction is not the majority. 
our faction is the best. We are indisputably correct about our general principles, but not everyone agrees with us. Well, we got to convert some. We got to win uh, electoral fights against others, and we've got to use pressure. And if Kevin uh, Kevin McCarthy feels the pressure to conform the way Nancy Pelosi has felt pressure from her radicals, which is the squad, and I'm, as I'm calling ourselves the radicals, if only because we are not the establishment, uh, that's okay. I don't care why they conform as long as they conform. And then come uh, 2024, will the Democrats go insane they if will. DeSantis wins. They will. Or Trump. But, but we need somebody who is conservative woke, who understands that every institution is dominated by the left and wants to uh, bulldoze it all. I mean, destroy academia. I mean, end student loans, no more grants to them. I mean, impo Absolutely. impose, uh, uh, you know, you know, we're, hey, guess what? Free speech on campus. If you don't defend it, you're you know, in trouble. You know what we need? We need a great reset of academia. Oh, yes. The idea that oh, we are, yes. we're having young people take out hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Disgraceful. To go to a building to read the internet. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And look, I, uh, you know, I, I've got teenagers, uh, so I kind of hear some of what teenagers do. Look, I'm 56 years old, okay? I, my, my finger's not on the pulse, and I don't get their music uh, <laughs> at all. But uh, a lot of them are unbelievably woke about the college scam. They're like, I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to go to uh, some giant college, get a useless credential. It's not going to help me walk out with this anchor around my neck. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I love uh, to hear it. I, I, you know, there are other things I can do. Maybe I go out there. Maybe I'll start a podcast, which I think is beautiful. There's so, God, there's so much opportunity out there. We just need to be unleashed. There's so many ways people can create a life that they want to live. You did it. You've done it. You've done it. I've done it. We built lives we wanted to live. Think about that. That is unprecedented in human history. How many people got to say it? Most of them spent their whole life, you know, rowing a, uh, 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 you know, people uh, hoeing a row. You, you, the, the, the issue, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I think, I think uh, the farmer. issue <laughs> is that we've we've taught too many people to to be envious, and so what you get is. People who desperately want to fit in yep. by just doing what they're told to do. Yes. And that's how you end up with people believing the economy is good. Yes. The media says it. I'll believe whatever they say so I can fit in. That's how you succeed. Instead of realizing that doing what you want to do and just doing it good, uh -huh. well, is is what brings success. I exactly. And then, and look, education may be part of it. Look, I, I needed a law degree to be a lawyer and a strate strategy degree to be a colonel. That's fine. I got those. They didn't stop me from doing other things. I, I, but, you know, the, 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 I, I was talking to the guys downstairs about being at UC San Diego. And I remember literally two things. I remember a little bit about the, uh, uh, from, from classes. All right. I, I, I had been, I worked on Capitol Hill as an intern through the college. I wrote on the comedy paper and the political paper. Uh, you know, I drank a lot of Coors. I saw the Jesus and Mary Chain live. I mean, I did a lot of fun things. But from classes, I learned a little about uh, 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 containment in the Cold War and got to talk to Michael Malice about it. By the way, that's his next book. And uh, I, I learned about proportional voting in uh, one particular class. And I understand it, and I don't like it. But um, that's literally all I got from the classes. I could have not ever gone to a class, and I'd be the same person. Yep. And that's, I mean... You know my favorite thing is? When people on Twitter are like... Tim Pool's a high school dropout, and it shows. And I'm like, bro, you have like, you're just like some random anonymous guy on Twitter, and like, I'm running a big multimedia business, dude. You're like, you're wake up, dude. Go work, go work for yourself. Stop thinking about other people. I, this this is what I'm saying. They spend so much time caring about other people instead of themselves. Well, look, I, I mean, uh, high school dropout. What does that mean? You, you it means you, I found institutionalized learning facilities to be a waste of time. Yes. And you're here. You you just had a guy with two advanced degrees, a law firm, uh, who was a colonel in the army, and I jumped on a plane to fly across the country to sit here talking to you for two hours. That seems pretty freaking good to me. Hard work pays off. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. 
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.